Oh, wait a second. That's later. Hey, I am back. It's Monday, March 29th, I guess. And we are back to the wheels rolling here at TG after about 24 hours off. So I enjoyed my break. I hope everybody else did too. Got to spend, I got to spend a little time uh, watching my daughter play softball. So uh, let's see, a few things to catch you up on. Of course, the big news over the weekend was Saturday's um, new target lesson. You got to know, I had a blast putting together Isn't It a Pity, a song that could be basically a campfire song with nothing but open chords, nothing but easy open chords. You can play a little fancier with bar chords. You can play the demo version, capoed up the neck to the fifth, seventh fret. I think I sang it at the third fret, having not, not being able to hit some of the notes that George hits. But anyway, so uh, that was, again, a lot of fun for me, and I hope everybody's had a chance to check out the lesson on Isn't It a Pity. There will definitely be more George Harrison in the future. Not for a couple weeks probably, but we'll see. you never know. Um, the uh, biggest thing going on, we have three more days in the song competition, so make sure if you want to get something in, we're, again, we've got around 40 entries right now, we're giving away a really nice guitar, well, a pretty nice guitar, that, uh, anyhow, so get those entries in because uh, the voting is going to start happening April 1st, which is, you know, like three days from now. So. Um, let's see, I got one more thing done on Saturday, managed to get an uploaded uh, review to Beaker's video on Hula Blues, so if anybody's checking out the, uh, the uh, you know, the Slack Key lesson, that's a, that's a good one to do. And uh, Beaker, you're doing a good job, keep up the good work. Some of the usual suggestions, get out the metronome and slow it down, that's what, that's, almost every answer is always going to include that with, with anything that's going on with, with you guys. But, um, and that is about it. I'm going to wrap up. We have some really special things kind of going on this week, but more about that over the next couple of days. And uh, do have to catch up on our Beatles trivia question from Saturday. I think you guys were right, you know, somebody had the answer right away that Paul used to play the trumpet and realized, though, when he was pretty young, that the singers got all the attention in the band and you can't play the trumpet and sing at the same time. So Paul started singing and, uh, you know, the singers get the girls, they get the attention, they get their, they're, they're the rock stars. So uh, anyhow, Paul gave up the trumpet to take up singing. Now, he also took up the bass because when there were three guitar players left in the band, I mean, there's a few different reasons for this, but, but one of the main ones is somebody had to do it. Now, George was a much better lead guitar player. It made no sense for George to take up the bass. And as weird as it seems, Paul, in, his, in a moment of, of brilliance, really uh, realized that there was, a much better, he, he, there was a much better chance of him being a good bass player than there was of John. Paul was a much better musician, much finer chops, much more disciplined and stuff like that. Played the right notes most of the time. John, not really in that category. And so... Um, by Paul taking up the bass, that really launched the, I mean, made the band, helped the path for the band. And so uh, his bass playing also really revolutionized bass playing because he played the bass more like a guitar player, playing melodic lines and stuff, the bass line to I Saw Her Standing There, unheard of in that kind of rock and roll stuff from then. Uh, birthday, all kinds of other things. So anyway, that was pretty much why Paul took up the bass. Now, um, and again, it was a great move for the band. One, t today kind of a short one, since we were talking about George Harrison and solo albums. Uh, I wonder who out there knows how many... There were, there, were, there were some solo albums released before the Beatles' last album. Now, the last album that was released was in 1970, Let It Be. But there were more than one albums that would be considered solo albums by members of the Beatles, meaning they didn't really have anybody else in the Beatles involved. So, kind of a two-part question. The first one is, what was the first album? What was the first album by a solo Beatle? And, actually, how many were there by all of them before Let It Be came out in 1970? And list them. Now, you can find this all over the internet probably with about 13 seconds, maybe 8 seconds worth of research. But, I want to see who out there actually knows this off the top of their head. I almost did. Well, nah, I did. But, but I'm kind of... A geeky like that. So that's it for today. Back tomorrow.